thank you for coming here today to cover the announcement of the establishment of the AXA and mm -hmm. Chair in Natural Hazards. Um, this chair is the result of a 3 million euro endowment by the AXA Research Fund. And to tell us more about the AXA NTU Chair, its rationale and objectives, I'd like to introduce the panel here today. Mr. Denny Devern, Deputy CEO of AXA. Uh, Professor Bertil Anderson, NTU President. Professor Kerry C, Director of the Earth Observatory of Singapore. Um, Professor C will, will be the first chairholder of the AXA NTU Chair. Ms. Gail Olivier, CEO AXA Asia Insurance and AXA Sponsor of the Chair. We also have with us today Godfra Fogale, Director of the AXA Research Fund, if you have any specific questions about the Research Fund and, um, and the work that it does. Um, <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, as a leading insurer present in uh, more than 60 countries throughout the world, serving more than 100 million clients, we think it is the, our uh, responsibility uh, to uh, reinforce knowledge on risk around the world. In property casualty as well as in uh, life insurance, uh, two core business lines of AXA, risk knowledge and understanding is uh, crucial to protect our customers. So, and this is why uh, four years ago we launched the AXA Research Fund, uh, because researching today will help better protect tomorrow. We support top-tier research on risk all over the world, trying to uh, resource the public debate and our own expertise with academic knowledge. Through our research philanthropic uh, sponsorship, we aim to foster a safer and stronger society over the long term. We have uh, committed 100 million euros in the AXA Research Fund, and so far we have spent or committed 73 million euros for more than 300 research teams around the world uh, of 47 nationalities based in 24 different countries. The AXA Research Fund uh, is committed to supporting countries that, that make research a focal point of their economic development. Therefore, in addition to already supporting 16 Asian researchers working in Europe, we are funding nine initiatives in Asia, uh, and uh, which are all judged excellent by their peers with no uh, geographic uh, affirmative action. Uh, this acknowledges the internal recognition and uh, academic excellence of the Asian research, uh, as well as AXA's long-term commitment to the region. The new chair in Singapore is exactly the kind of excellence that the AXA Research, Funds, uh, Research Fund wants to support and to partner with to better understand and prevent risk uh, for society at large. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much and uh, good morning, friends of media. Uh, we are now today having a gift signing ceremony for the Exxon and Yang Chair in nat Natural Hazards and I think that is quite fantastic and unique here in Singapore uh, 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 and um, the donor AXA is providing us with uh, 3 million euro of course uh, some years ago that would be even more but it, it's respectable 5 million <laughs> Singapore dollars so this is uh, very important what I'm impressed by the AXA allocation of research is very competitive. It's really competitive on a global uh, level. Also competitive between different disciplines. And uh, I know that Kerry C has worked very intensively with this application. And I know it has been very thoroughly analyzed on this totally global uh, level. And um, Kerry C and the Earth Observatory has been chosen. I think that's a big achievement. It's a big achievement for NT, for, for Carrie C. I think it's a big achievement for NTU and for Singapore. That shows, of course, that Singaporean research today is competitive. Singaporean research today is competitive with the best institutions in Europe and the best institutions in the United States. And we should be proud of that, we who are working here in, in, in Singapore. Of course, I, as president of NTU now since half a year, I think this is, of course, another <coughs> evidence for the progress of NTU or the creation of what I call the new NTU, a more research-intensive university. 
And uh, I think it's important for a university to have very good people. There is people who uh, there, there you can say that uh, what is the most important with the university? It's the people, it's the people, and it's the people. And of course, we have been recruiting very high-level researchers to Singapore NTU in the last two to three years, which makes NTU a very different university who it was only five to eight years ago. And I would also say we have had very success, and many researchers have joined NTU in Singapore. But I would say that the crown jewel in the NTU is the Earth Observatory, Earth Observatory of Singapore. And um, I also think it was important that we got Earth science in Singapore. Singapore didn't have that before. Of course, we had chemistry, engineering, and medicine, and so on. But we actually did not have Earth science. And I think a country with these very high aspirations that Singapore had to be a global player needs to have that. And also Singapore is a little bit of a safe haven, but you don't have to go far away from here, where our neighboring countries are struck by earthquakes, volcanoes, and tsunamis. We all must think about climate change. And uh, Kerry C here has a team, Paul Tapanier from France. Uh, we have poached him, yes, but I think for a very good co course. Uh, we have Chris Newhall from the ATA. And maybe you hear about Kerry C, Paul Tapanier, and Chris Newhall a lot. But I'm also very impressed by the young scientists that are coming to NTU and EUs from all over the world. And of course, they is going to be the earth scientists of tomorrow who are going to carry on and carry this not. I've retired. No, maybe you never will retire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, so there's another reason why I'm very pleased by this is that sustainability is NTU's profile today. NTU has been able to attract over 800 million Singapore dollars for sustainability research, energy, water, and risk management. The natural hazard is, of course, a part of the more global uh, sustainability aspect. So we have a lot of engineering going on that has a synergy with that. And in NTU today, we are very uh, philosophically think about interdisciplinarity and complex systems. And actually, this week we have a conference at NTU where we have the best experts in the world talking about complex systems. And a complex system, and the title of this conference is, is, is "More is Different." And more is different means that if you have the, the climate systems, for example, so, or the, uh, the 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 fault, what do you say uh, when you have the earthquakes? Yeah, yeah, no, the 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 the, the, the border between two faults, 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 yeah. Fault, yeah, very complex issues, right? And, 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 um, and for, for these complex systems, you, you need new types of analysis, new type of computers, and so on, to understand these. And uh, this is something that we put an emphasis on at, 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 at NTU. These are the hard things, but there are also RSIS, the Ratanamnan School of International System, that deals with political risks. And natural risks and political risks are certainly also connected to each other. We have an institute for catastrophic risk management that uh, also works on actually assessing, also with close collaboration with the insurance industry, ICRM and so on. Uh, so, so that is very important. So we are extremely pleased and proud of this very competitive grant we have received, an important grant. And um, we can do research in medicine to improve our health. We can do research in engineering to create new products and uh, job opportunities. But I think it's also important that we do research to create a safe, safer planet. This is where we live. And uh, I, I think that is how I want to end this. And thank you very much, Axel.
We'll have a couple of words from Gail, who's the ISA sponsor of the chair, before Gail hands over to Gail. Okay, thank you. So I have the, the privilege to be the sponsor of the chair on behalf of AXA. I see it as a great opportunity to bring together the two worlds. One is the research world and one is the business world. I think what we are trying to establish and that's what the basis of our discussion when we met a few months ago was an intellectual partnership where both partners can benefit from it. In our business, which is, for my side, general insurance, the knowledge of risk is critical. Our business is to protect risk, and to better protect risk, we need to be more aware of it, we need to be able to modelize the risk, to make assumptions, and then to price it the right way, so that when our customers need us, we are still there to pay the claims, and we can be there for the customers when it's very important to them. We view the partnership with NTU and with EOS as a great opportunity to develop our knowledge towards risk and also to leverage our network and our entities to probably share our existing and experienced knowledge of risk for the benefit of the research. It was very interesting to me when we met again a few months ago. It was just after the Thailand flood, which has been a very dramatic event for Thailand, which has had a dramatic impact also on the general insurance industry, because the size of the flood, because the size of the damages in the country. There had been many assumptions in the past regarding Bangkok and the flooding situation, <coughs> both in Thailand and in Bangkok, which have been the basis of our own assumptions when we have modelized the risk in Thailand. Very interesting to me that Professor C was doing similar assumptions with obviously much more in-depth research on in how many years Bangkok would be flooded, in how many years Jakarta would be flooded, and how much that could impact the way we are developing our own economies and our own businesses in those countries. And this is critical because in these economies in Asia, which are still very much in the developing phase, the capital of these countries plays a huge role in the economic development of those countries. So the infrastructure, the political awareness towards the risk of flooding, of earthquake, is critical for the long-term development of those economies. So the sponsorship that we are doing and the, uh, through AXA, the investment that we are putting into the NTU and the EOS is a step forward in terms of bringing more awareness towards risk, getting a better uh, prevention towards our customers and a better knowledge and protection versus our risk. With that, uh, I think the, the, the parole and the uh, key messages should be conveyed, conveyed by Professor C, who will be the, obviously the key driver of the works of EOS going forward. Thank you, Gail. Um, she and I had a lovely uh, lunch about a month or two ago, and uh, I think we really hit it off. Uh, but it's, one of the things that's exciting to me about this, uh, this new uh, relationship is that, in fact, we both have an intellectual interest, as, as Gail says, in, um, in how we, what we learn about risk and how we translate that into action, how we actually help humanity have a softer landing uh, in, the, in the 21st century with respect to the hazards that it faces because of uh, larger and larger megacities, because of greater and greater exposure of uh, uh, because of climate change and to you know, agricultural uh, issues, food sustainability, food security, and so on. Um, I'll just remind the, uh, the media here that uh, the observatory was first approved by the, by the Prime Minister's committee, REIC committee, four, about four years ago, just shy of a month, four years ago. We began to operate about three years ago. And, up, uh, and since that time, we've uh, hired many, fa many faculty members, mostly from abroad, but where we can, from Singapore. Uh, and uh, those faculty cover everything from climate research to sea level research to uh, earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic research. We, we chose in our original proposal three years ago to focus on those five major hazards. Uh, first of all, because we couldn't do everything and they are five very important hazards here in Southeast Asia. Uh, the, the subtitle of our proposal was Science for a, for a Sustainable Man-Nature Paradigm in Southeast Asia. Sustainable was put there because uh, MTU was gearing up to, to 
create a major focus, or we call a peak of excellence on sustainability. Uh, it's clear that, uh, that we're coming up against limits uh, in terms of resources, whether it's water, whether it's uh, minerals, whether it's uh, energy resources. We're coming up against limits in terms of what uh, nature will allow us to do in terms of, of these hazards. So, so uh, from the very, very outset, we had the idea that we were, at our core, researchers. At our core, we're earth scientists. But about 25% of the effort we were going to, that we envisioned uh, engaging in, was going to be a combination of research and non-research in areas outside of earth sciences. So how, for example, do we affect policy? That's an academic question. That's also a practical question. How do we influence education? How do we teach Singaporean kids what it means to be human on the 21st century planet? How do we uh, engage with the economists if, if climate is changing, and that means that food security is at risk, if in fact premiums have to, be, have to change because uh, the risks are, are changing, how do we understand those risks and get them transmitted to, to the people who need to use, those, the, the, use that information? Well, just as we are uh, thinking for uh, after the proposal is funded, just as we did, uh, year two, as we were starting to think hard about how do we do this non-earth science component Along comes our white horse, our, our champion on the white horse, AXA Fund, and they say, you know, we're interested in, in proposals for uh, professorships that would be working on, on these interesting things. And so we put together a proposal, and um, uh, that proposal was successful. Um, it's, it's obvious why an insurance company would want to understand better natural Risk, risk caused by natural hazards. And in order to understand the risk, you have to understand the hazard. So it seems like a natural that actually would do this. But you know, most insurance companies, I think, would say, well, we're going to have a contract with you. We want to do you to do this, and this, and this, and this. <laughs> but AXA was wonderful. AXA says, no, no. We have, like you, we have a long, long-term interest. We have a, a long, a, a distant horizon. We know we want to aim toward uh, better information for understanding risk. And we know that means that you've got to be able to do your work in identifying the hazards and then figuring out how to get that information out to where it matters to people like us, but not just us. So, so that, in fact, is, is what's happened. The, the, uh, the endowment is actually just that. It's an endowment that we will use, not for our science, but to figure out how to get that science into the into the bins that it needs to go into to, to make the world a safer place and a more and, and to put civilization on a more sustainable course. So uh, let me give you a few examples that we're thinking of. Uh, Bertel mentioned ICRM. Uh, I can also mention the National Institute of Education, the economic the economists at, at NTU, the business school at NTU, the Roger Rotten School that, that Bertel also mentioned, the policy think tank in graduate school. Um, we want to use this money to help to help develop stronger connections to economists, to policy wonks or whatever we should call them officially, policy people, uh, to to educators, to 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 make those ties between we research we earth science researchers and those entities stronger. We want to find special opportunities within academia, within NTU. There's got to be research that we can do that isn't being done, say, in-house by AXA, or in-house by Swiss Re, or in-house by other, uh, other folks in the insurance business. So what is that? Um, what, what can we actually do at the observatory, at NTU, that will add value, that will, that will raise all boats in terms of, in terms of people, you know, people and, and businesses that are involved in trying to uh, uh, spread, spread the risk, ensure, ensure risk. So um, I, could mention a, uh, I could mention a couple of particulars, but I think maybe I should just stick with those four generalities that, that we, we want to be involved in, with, with economists, with policy uh, policymakers, with uh, educators, and with, uh, with people who are in, involved in trying to quantify risk. So I think, I, I wasn't going to do this, but I think I'll end with a quote, actually. And I'll, I'll end with a quote that's particularly apropos for French people. 
okay? But it comes from Winston Churchill. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, it's not one of those ribald ones from Winston Churchill. It's a more... Uh, and let me put on my professor's hat now and ask you guys, what, would, what of consequence happened to France in 1936? 1936, what of consequence happened to France in 1936? That has to do with the place that Bertel used to work. It was, it was, uh, it was the, the year of uh, uh, when the France introduced the paid uh, uh, vacations. Paid vacations. <laughs> you're, you're close, but actually it's, it's when Hitler invented the Rhine, right? Yeah. And he took over, he took over, uh, I believe, all of Alsace, I don't know. No, 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 no. Quite, anyway, sorry. anyway and, and what happened was that uh, the, the English could have done something about it. They could have actually sided with France uh, diplomatically and said, we are not going to allow this. Yes. And Hitler would have backed off. But the British didn't do that. And consequences were awful, as we know. So here's, now I want you to think about what I'm going to read here, not in the context of what happened in France, on the border of France and Germany in 1936, but think now in terms of what's happening in this slide, climate change. This is a melting glacier I took a picture of a number of years ago. You can see the ice still there behind Bertel's head uh, in, the, in the white, and then on top of it is all the gravel that's melting out of the ice, and it, it doesn't melt, so it stays in the forms of blanket. Okay. So, a number of things have happened in the last 50 years, in the, in the latter half of the 21st, 20th century. Population increase uh, to, to 7 billion made possible by technology uh, and by our being so smart. Um, limitations on resources that we're starting to, starting to see. Uh, big earthquakes that affect more people because we've put more people in dangerous places. Okay, so think about all that previous context and the future in the context of whatever you want to church on. So he's giving a speech and he says, owing to past neglect, in the face of plainest warnings, we now have entered upon a period of danger greater than has, than has befallen Britain since the U-boat campaign was crushed. The era of procrastination, of half measures, of soothing and baffling expedients, of delays, is coming to a close. In its place, we are entering a period of consequences. So I'll think about that in terms of natural hazards. We are definitely in the 21st century, in a different century than the 20th. We, we, we did a number of rather unthoughtful things in the 20th century, and now we are going to have some consequences. You know, in terms of all these risks that, that Gail was referring to, how can we partner with AXA through this endowment and with others to make that challenge, to, to meet that challenge? How can we actually help to produce truly safer and more sustainable societies in face of the of the things that we did more or less unconsciously in the 20th century. So let me just add, uh, end with that poetic uh, ending and see if you have any questions for us. One thing I'd specifically like to do, we've been talking about doing this year, is actually have a meeting with a handful, maybe a half dozen or so uh, insurers representatives of insurance companies, and start talking about what it is that we could do at NTU, uh, within EOS and other entities at NTU, to actually do something that they don't do in-house to calculate their risks. What can we do to actually um, uh, bring the science together with statistics or with or whatever to, to, um, to, to lift all boats with regard to, the, to the, all boats that are actually involved in insuring risk? So that's one specific thing that we would like to do. Um, we, um, we'd, like, we'd like eventually, I think, to make some higher professorial hires in conjunction with other entities like RSIS or with the Economics Division or the Business School or with NIE uh, to you know, share professorships to, to work on the academic side of, of these four areas. I'm being a bit fuzzy here because I don't know exactly how we want to do it. Okay. It's a big challenge. I, I, know who, I know how to hire people in earthquakes and in tsunamis, but it's, 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 it's a frontier field, right? We don't exactly know how to, how to make these connections. Any research projects in mind? I'm a little bit resident to, resident, resident? No, reticent. To, to say anything specific, uh, because I know it'll appear in the press. 
Um, uh, one, of, one, of the, one of the things, but I'll do so anyway. Uh, one of the things that Gail and I talked about that was exciting to both of us a few months ago when we had lunch was um, Jakarta, you may know, you probably don't know, uh, is withdrawing groundwater to serve its industrial and, and its residential water needs. And it's doing it at such a, at a very prodigious rate. And when you withdraw water from the ground, the sand grains that used to be supported by the water collapse onto each other and the ground sinks. There are parts of Jakarta that are sinking at 20 centimeters per year. Even with the glaciers melting, the sea level is only rising at 3 millimeters. So this is 10 times faster than what's happening naturally. By 2050, half of Jakarta will be below sea level at this rate. Now this is a fairly complicated problem. Uh, it's, it's a problem that is going to require economists, and politicians, and scientists, earth scientists, uh, to work together to understand what exactly is happening, first of all, that's the earth science part, who is at risk, who will be at risk in 10 years or in 20 years, how does, that, how does knowledge of that affect what people do in terms of insurance policies, in terms of moving to Bogor, in terms of moving someplace else, a very complex problem. So this is, a, this, is, this is not a project we are actually, actually committed to doing. We haven't even talked to our Indonesian friends. But it's the sort of thing that we could work with the Complexity Institute. It's being set up now at NPU. We can work with economists. We can work directly with insurers who have uh, demographic and building inventory data. So, so that's an example, not to, be, not to be a specific example we're going to do, but that, that's an example of the kind of problem that we think we could address in academia that would be of, of broad benefit for producing a safer, more sustainable society. I think if I may guess the, this beautiful but yet scary picture we have behind us here, the melting glaciers. I mean, you have uh, many times said how this will affect Singapore, the city of Singapore, and what can we do about it, mm -hmm. about the uh, rising sea levels? These mountain glaciers add about uh, half a millimeter per year to the global sea level rise of the current day. If you add in Greenland and Antarctica, you end up with a total of almost three millimeters a year now, which is about two millimeters a year faster than it was 50 years ago. We don't know what that curve looks like in any detail for the rest of the century. But we can, we've, we've made some, pro well, my colleagues, uh, not at EOS, have made projections which have actually helped Singapore already decide to raise its, its new land by an additional meter. So all new made land now in Singapore, it was announced a few months ago, will be built one meter higher. Uh, so these are the kinds of things that people need to know about well ahead of time. And let, let me just, that spurs another thought. I feel very fortunate to be where I am right now. Singapore is one of the most um, visionary countries in the world. It thinks decades ahead, like it's doing with this sea level issue. Uh, AXA is also in that, uh, in, in that intellectual space. It thinks decades ahead. It's a pleasure and a privilege for me to be associated with these two, with these two organizations, Singapore and, uh, and AXA. And I better mention, since my president is here, with NTU as well. <laughs> <laughs> of course, NTU is so high up, so we will not be flooded. Uh, but. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it is downtown Singapore, and I think what, what uh, Carrie C. and the EOS have already done to Singapore is to change the way we are, are building and planning in Singapore, just to meet that challenge of the racing sea level. I think that is already a very concrete example. And there are clearly opportunities where we can mix the pragmatic operational experience that each of us has with the research to foresee what can happen in the future years. So uh, I, yeah, and, and the possibility of influencing the policy debate is uh, what matters for us. This is why we are uh, sponsoring uh, academic research, because we are not looking to get the data for ourselves. We're trying to influence the political debate. I mean, the, 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 uh, Example that Professor Sia took about uh, about Jakarta is a very good example. We um, are we, we are a general insurance in uh, in Indonesia. We don't want the, the issue for us is not to find the right price for insurance in Jakarta. The the, the issue is to make sure that the uh, public policy debate is influenced by academic research so that everyone can insure Jakarta.
I'd like to also do something, uh, perhaps using using some of this the endowment funds, uh, some of the return on the endowment. Um, the last day that I was in Los Angeles, I picked up a copy of the Sunday Sunday LA Times, and right in, in bold headlines on the front page was Singapore Math, right on the front page, and I really what is that? And so I read about Singapore math and how Singapore math, the way of teaching math that was developed by the National Institute of Education, by NIE, right across from EOS on the NTU campus, that they had invented a way of teaching math that was actually working for the, for the underprivileged kids, the poor kids living in the ghettos of Los Angeles. First time that had ever happened. And so one of the first things I, I thought of when I, when I uh, came to, to Singapore was, let's invent Singapore earth science. So let's invent a new way of teaching earth science using examples from Southeast Asia to, and, and let's, call it, let's call it, let's brand it Singapore earth science. So one of the things that, uh, that uh, we're starting to work on now in, uh, in the observatory with, uh, with the help of Susan Erickson back here who's our director of education outreach is what on earth does that mean, Carrie? What are you talking about? We don't know yet what it means. But we know we can. We, we think that if following the lead of Singapore Math and NIE, uh, we think we can partner with NIE uh, to to create Singapore Earth Science, and that that'll be something new, something novel, and something uh, something great. Do you have any more questions, or if you want to approach anyone at the panel, or one for one on one, just let us know. We'll set it up separately. Thank you all for coming. Okay, maybe um, we can talk about um, what you're going to do with the research money. First of all, and what kind of research are you going to do in you know, terms of connecting with businesses and communities, as you mentioned earlier? A significant part of what the observatory proposed to do when it was first set up three years ago was to get our science on natural hazards out into the world where it can make a difference where it can help to build safer and more sustainable societies here in Singapore as well as elsewhere in Southeast Asia. So the AXA endowment, the, in, the return on that endowment and the Singapore uh, doubling of that uh, or, or matching that one for one, what that endowment money will allow us to do then is with annually then with the um, return on the endowment we'll be able to uh, reach out into the business world, into the world of economic research, into policy research to to, to give our research legs in the world where it, where it matters, so to, to help to build a sustainable and safer society. Why is it so important to connect with businesses, economies, and so on? Well, the reason, the reason it's important to connect with people outside of just the, the research world, the ivory tower as we call it, is that the, the, the 21st century is going to be a very difficult century for humankind. Uh, there are issues of resource scarcity, you know, where are the last resources, how do we use them appropriately, sustainably. There are issues of uh, how do we deal with tsunami hazards, how do we, how do we spread the risk around uh, when, when it comes to tsunamis or earthquakes or volcanic eruptions. How do we prepare for the food crises that might occur if we have a major eruption somewhere in the globe from a volcano. So these are issues, of, uh, these are academic issues, they're also practical issues. So the, the AXA Nanyang Chair endowment will help us actually start looking at those questions so that we can actually make a difference in the world. Can you give us some examples of what you look into? Well, one of the thing I'd, one of the thing I'd like to do is I'd like to use uh, these funds to, to help support what I want to call Singapore Earth Science. I want to develop a new way of teaching Earth Science that is using examples from Southeast Asia rather than being California-centric or, or European-centric. So let's, uh, let's build a, a, a new scheme for educating humanity about what it means to live on this wonderfully dynamic planet. There's one example. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Esteemed guests, uh, good afternoon. On behalf of AXA and Nanyang Technological University, commonly known as NTU, we welcome you warmly to this very prestigious event. My name is Caroline Bohajar. I am the director of this campus, and I'm delighted to be your host for the event today. With us here today are some of our business leaders, partners and associates from AXA together with NTU. Our focus today is to really understand how we can contribute to corporate responsibility and how we can make the world a safer place, not only for us today, but also for future generations. 
You will hear more about the good work that has begun through the intellectual partnership between AXA and the NTU launch of the AXA Nanyang Chair in Natural Hazards. I will now call upon Gael Olivier, CEO of AXA Asia General Insurance and sponsor of the AXA Nanyang Chair to open the event. Gael. Dear guest, I have the privilege today to be the sponsor on behalf of AXA of the partnership we are building with NTU EOS, the Earth Observatory of Singapore. This is an immense privilege. Why so? Because in my function as CEO of General Nations Business in Asia, risk is critical to our activity. And not only is it critical to us, but it is critical to our customers and how the societies in which we operate are developing themselves. And a better understanding of the risk is what we are trying to do every day, I would say in a much more uh, humble way than what Professor CA is going to do over the next years in a much more scientific manner. But I see this partnership as a way to combine efforts as an intellectual partnership where we can share our knowledge, where we AXA, we can share our experience of risk. And I must say, unfortunately, in some cases, we do have some experience of risk and that we can share with our scientific community to prolong their effort in terms of better understanding the risk, but also better modelizing the risk in the future. So it is important for our business. It is important that it is in Asia as well. Asia, for those of you who do not know, for in 2011 has been a very dramatic year in terms of natural catastrophe, overall worldwide. Asia has represented more than 65% of the economic losses in natural catastrophe last year. This is probably one of the most dramatic years in Asia that we have gone through last year. It, we have learned a lot from that. There are some, obviously, natural catastrophes which are difficult to prevent, most of them. Yet, there are some infrastructure, preparation, protection, in advance awareness of our customers that we can develop to better protect our customers and the societies at large versus those risks. I think this is what we are trying to do. The aim of our partnership with EOS is to contribute to the development of the scientific research towards risk so that all together we can build a safer society going forward. It is therefore my pleasure to welcome here Professor Sier, Denis Duverne, who is the deputy CEO of the AXA Group, and Bertil Anderson, who is uh, uh, chair of the NTU, and for all of them to express to you why we are doing this partnership, what we expect from it, and I look forward for a very successful intellectual partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Gael. I will now invite Professor Bertil Anderson, President of NTU, to address us all. Professor. Madame Gael Olivier, Monsieur Denis Duvain, distinguished partners from AXA Group, fellow colleagues, and ladies and gentlemen. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the launch of this AXA Nanyang Chair in Natural Hazards. I like the term intellectual partnership. I think that's what we are out for. So this is indeed an important undertaking of tremendous global impact, I would say, and I speak for all at NTU when I say that it's a privilege and also an honor for us to be receiving this generous gift of three million euro respectively 
five million Singapore dollars uh, for this chair, Aksan and Yang chair in natural hazards at NTU. We should remember that this endowment, this generous gift, has been evaluated globally in global competition, in severe global competition. And I know that one of the few grants that was given out last year went to a, 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 a Nobel Prize winner, Sean Ray Len in Strasbourg, where I, of course, happened to come from uh, uh, recently. So I, I think that just shows you in what kind of level we are talking about when we're talking about access funding. We're also talking about earth science. Earth sciences affects all our lives. Our landscape has been shaped by natural processes such as tectonics, weathering, and biological activity over billions of years. I myself study photosynthesis, and uh, I always say, you know, and two and a half billion years ago, it was the Big Bang in evolution when plants were capable of using solar energy and create atmosphere at atmosphere. And I think two and a half billion years is a long time ago. But for the geologists, for the earth scientists, this is a very short time. So we're talking about different time perspectives here. Natural hazards such as earthquakes and volcanoes are responsible for many deaths and disasters for the loss of many homes and livelihood. Increased knowledge of natural hazards will improve predictions of the occurrence and scale of these life-threatening events, giving people a chance to prepare and, of course, to survive. Studying the Earth's past help us understand what will happen in the future. The tsunami we had in uh, Japan quite recently, due to the very uh, big earthquake, we, we create a lot of problem. Actually, I think even Professor C here had been involved in saying, yes, there had been as big tsunami some hundred years ago. And I just said, studying the Earth's pasts help us understand what will happen in the future, what can happen in the future. So actually, the information was there that such a devastating tsunami could happen in Japan. Earth scientists recognize the challenges faced by Earth's inhabitants and play a key role in resolving these challenges. They monitor changes in our environment, model our impact on the environment, and suggest solutions to our environmental problems. They also participate in global efforts to understand these infrequent but often devastating events such as tsunamis and earthquakes, as I just mentioned. And I think that points to the thing. It's rare high-consequence events. It's actually hard for society to deal with this. Are you going to make a billion dollar investment to build a protection walls for something that may not only happen in 283 years? I mean, that's an interesting question. And the rarity also means that we don't really know about it. When the 2004 tsunami happened here in Indonesia, but spread over a lot of all the Indian Ocean, there were Swedish, well, 1,200 Swedish tourists died in Phuket due to this. And there are stories, of course, where people said, run, run, there is a tsunami coming. No one knew what tsunami was, because that was nothing that was in the school books in Sweden or something like that. There was a telephone call to the Swedish prime minister. And he said, there's been a terrible tsunami in, in, in Thailand, and it seems that many Swedes have died. And he was, he said, oh, he shoved it down to some uh, junior uh, administrators who didn't know what had happened. That prime minister lost the next election <laughs> because of that. 
because he didn't know what really would have happened and didn't take action until it was. So that, of course, means that the research that the Earth's Observatory is going to do and the AXA chair here, of course, it's research. But you see, I always maintain the opinion that research and education goes hand in hand. There is not a Berlin Wall in between these things, and I think this is one example of that. Now, coming back to AXA's generous gift to NTU's Earth's Observatory of Singapore, or EOS, which is easier for Swede to pronounce, as it's known, will be a major boost to our research effort and the training and education of Earth scientists, and I just exemplify the need for that. We are proud to find a partner who has faith in our research capabilities. AXA have a trust. That's, AXA do not micromanage. Of course, we have a lot of research funding in, in, in NTU from funders who seems that we already should have the results before we uh, do the research. But uh, I think this is a good example of open research. We are confident that NTU is a good match for access aspiration in this partnership, and together we can achieve great things for a sustainable Earth, and that's, of course, what we are talking about. The Earth Observatory of Singapore at NTU rates as one of the best research institutions of its kind in the world. It addresses key scientific que questions in natural hazards such as, as I mentioned, earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanis, volcanic unrest, climate change, and rising sea level. It is making great strides in the field of sustainability with its unique blend of geosciences and social science, excellent blended into a single institutions. We actually talk about interdisciplinarity here. We are talking about complex system. It so happens that this week at NTU we have the world expertise on complex systems discussing complex science under the very intriguing title that uh, more is different. Think about that. The division of earth science at EAS uh, aims to build up a team of outstanding collaborative researchers to advance understanding of Southeast Asia's dynamic oceans, atmosphere, and tectonic plates. I think it's important that this research institute in also have a longer footprint in the Singapore academic system. They will be involved in conducting fundamental research in tectonics, volcanic, and climate process in around the Southeast Asia. And the better understanding of these natural hazards will contribute to safer and more sustainable societies. The uh, Earth Observatory is led by Kerry C. But we also have Paul Tapanier. We have Chris Newhall here. But I'm also very impressed by the young scientists from all over the world that has come to Singapore to NTU and EOS to join this team. And that, of course, proves something that excellence attracts excellence. In my engagement in the Nobel Committee, I always get the question, what is the best way to get a Nobel Prize? And one of my answers is, you should have a supervisor that have won the Nobel Prize. So excellence creates excellence, and I think EOS is an example of that. With the funding of the AXA Nanyang Chair, NTU will be able to strengthen its integrated research capabilities, which include risk assessment and management, public policy, business, and pedagogy. This makes cross-disciplinarity and collaboration very essential. Let me give you examples. NTU economic divisions at the, Nan the Nanyang Business School, the National Institute of Education, and NTU's Institute of Catastrophic Risk Management. We are proud that EOS is recognized as a distinctive 21th century research institution 
helmed by earth scientists and technical specialists of the highest caliber. We have to remember that when the Earth Observatory was started and got this big grant from RCE grant from the Singaporean government back in 2008, I think. There was no earth science in Singapore. Carrie C., Paul Tapanier, Chris Newhall and the others started from scratch. And uh, considering what has been achieved since then, I think it's very impressive. And with this extra Euro AXA bo uh, boast here, I think we will go to even higher uh, strengths. Because the annual returns of the AXA chair endowment, and it is an endowment, not a grant, will enable Professor C to create and strengthen the multidisciplinary research in natural hazards and climate change. Um, this will be done by other research and, and entities at the university, thus strengthening sustainable earth as one of NTU's strategic peaks of excellence. In conclusion, understanding how our planet works is essential if we are to properly manage our environment and predict how the environment will change in the future. Our planet is the only planet we know of. I think we should take good care of it. And understanding of earth science is critical to a secure future. Our secure future. Thank you, AXA, for your fantastic gift and endowment. We're going to use it well. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. It is now my privilege to invite Monsieur Denis Duverne, Deputy CEO of the AXA Group, who flew in especially for this event, to tell us more about the AXA Research Fund. Monsieur Duverne. <clears throat> Thank you. Good, af good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, uh, I'd like first to uh, tell you a few words about AXA. As a leading insurer present in uh, more than 60 countries throughout the world, serving more than 100 million uh, customers, we think it is uh, extremely important to uh, reinforce knowledge on risks. In property casualty, as well as in uh, life insurance, two of our core business lines, risk knowledge and risk understanding, are crucial to protect our customers. This knowledge is first produced by our internal experts thanks to field data and internal analysis. Nevertheless, in a constantly changing world, we can no longer rely solely on the past to explain the future, even with some parameter adjustments. This is why societies need to promote rational versus historical consensus to truly understand the current reality of risk. In this perspective, we have to complement and uh, challenge the established consensus, including our own expertise, by knowledge produced in the most advanced academic, and academic environment. And it is our responsibility to make sure this knowledge is widely disseminated. This is why we created the AXA Research Fund in 2008 because research today helps uh, to uh, better protect tomorrow. We encourage scientific research that could contribute to understanding and uh, preventing against environmental, life, and socioeconomic risks. The AXA Research Fund supports world-class research by providing institutions with the means of attracting and leading the uh, best scientists of today. This is why we sponsor projects and chairs. And of the next generation, we also sponsor PhDs and postdoctoral fellowships. We furthermore help our supported researchers to get a tribune in the public debate so that they actively take part in building and evolving the social cons consensus on risk that are a challenge to our societies. The AXA Research Fund is a uh, an ambitious international scientific philanthropic activity, initiative, sorry, 
We finance more than 300 researchers from 47 nationalities based in 24 countries. Uh, this, uh, these projects, these, uh, uh, these endowments, these uh, donations are decided by a scientific uh, committee of the research funds which is supported by more than a thousand reviewers and 750 research institutions submit applications in our annual campaigns. To allow our supported researchers to get a tribune in a public debate, we encourage them to share the knowledge with their peers, improving their analysis through a cross-disciplinary approach with the press, helping them inform people about the risk they are exposed to. with government agencies, giving them rational scientific input to make accurate public decisions, with our own risk experts, uh, as previously mentioned by Gael. Even our competitors risk experts, allowing them to better protect their clients and make knowledge progress our over corporate competition. We believe that a, a more educated world on risks will be better for us to operate in. When it comes to knowledge, AXA's interest is fully aligned with public interest. By supporting top-tier research on risk all over the world, we intend to resource the public debate and our own expertise with better academic knowledge. We aim to foster a safer and stronger society over the long term. So uh, why are we doing it also in Asia? Uh, it's obvious. In the 20th century, when Chinese, Indian or Southeast Asian researchers decided to pursue a major international academic career, they often move to uh, universities in the West. However, over the past decade, Asian academic centers have proven able to compete successfully at the international level, and we would like more of this. This trend has been evidenced at the AXA Research Fund, where 28 Asian universities have submitted almost 100 applications in the last three years. So <clears throat> the AXA Research Fund is indeed committed to supporting countries that make academic research a cardinal point of their economic development. Therefore, uh, not content with already supporting 16 Asian researchers working across Europe, we are now funding nine research initiatives in Asia, all deemed excellent by their academic peers around the world, with no geographic bias. Note also that the Asians represented among the AXA Fund recipients working in Europe are mostly coming from Asian centers attracting European fellows in China, in India, in Japan, and in Singapore. This network of researchers includes risk experts studying a wide range of topics. The main reasons companies go bankrupt, the relationship between climate change and natural disasters, mathematical modeling of the spread of epidemics, the study of nearly immortal microorganisms that alter our approach to longevity, or even what happens in our brains when we take a risky decision. As some of you may know, Singapore was the first uh, Asian country where the AXA Research Fund has awarded a grant. One year later, it's again in Singaporean University which is being awarded our first Asian chair. So far, we have committed close to four million to support Singaporean research half of the budget committed to Asian research, and we will continue to do so in the future if you continue to come with uh, nice uh, projects to uh, Godfroy, the head of the research fund, um, who is sitting next to Bertil. In recent years, Asia has been hit by some of the most catastrophic natural disasters, and Gael was uh, mentioning that. In 2011, we had the Tohoku earthquake in Japan, with the, uh, followed by uh, the tsunami that everyone talked about. In July, there was the monsoon floods in Thailand that persisted until mid of January of this year. In September, there were big floods uh, and landslides in, in China that affected more than 12 million people. The threat of climate change in Asia is, uh, is absolutely obvious. In addition to that, uh, <clears throat> and Bertil mentioned the, uh, the, uh, Suma the, the tsunami that hit Sumatra in, uh, and uh, a large part of Asia in 2004. Uh, there, there is clearly the issue of the disproportionate impacts of natural disasters on vulner vulnerable populations, mainly due to the fact that the wealth is concentrated on the coastal areas 
and to the lack of awareness on risk driven by climate change. There is an increasing need of awareness of just risk among the Asian population, and we not only want to focus on uh, very high quality academic research, but also making sure that this research, research is widely disseminated. To uh, this end, the AXA Research Fund has established the uh, uh, AXA Nanyang Chair in Natural Hazards, an intellectual partnership fostering AXA's mission to raise awareness on risk related to climate change and natural hazards. I sincerely wish all the best to Professor CA and his team and would now invite him to introduce his work. Thank you very much. Well, this is getting to be quite an adventure. I, uh, I want to thank all of my friends from the observatory who are over here. Thank you for, for coming today. We have quite a three days ahead of us, don't we? Our international review panel shows up, uh, well, it's partly here in this room, actually. Uh, welcome, Jean-Philippe, wherever you are. Ah, okay. I, uh, I thought that when I left Caltech, I was, I was um, getting away from the French invasion, but uh, Jean-Philippe, as director of the Tectonics Observatory, has brought in a lot of postdocs and other folks who, who speak this wonderful version of English uh, that I'm very jealous of, actually. I, I, uh, I find that you Frenchmen speak English much more beautifully than we do. I mean that sincerely. Uh, so so I, uh, I came to Singapore in 2007 with the idea that I was going to write a book that was going to be, be a, the basis for a TV series, sort of along the lines of what Carl Sagan did in the 1970s. And lo and behold, one of the, the first week I was there, Bertel's first week as well, um, we were asked to come into the president's office and, and, uh, and there asked if we'd be interested in writing a proposal for a lot of money to do something I'd been taunting them about for, for years. Whenever I would pass through on my way to Sumatra to do my research, I would say, you know, you guys can't really work on risk here because you don't know what the hazards are. And until you know the hazards, you're just guessing about, about the risk. And so uh, they basically called my bluff and they said, well, why don't you do something about it? Why don't you come to Singapore and write a proposal? So, uh, so I wrote a proposal knowing that it wouldn't be funded, uh, sort of like the AXA proposal, actually. And, uh, and to my surprise, it looked progressively as if it was going to be. And so I came back to Caltech and I said, hey, uh, Jean-Philippe, um, I have something I need to tell you. <laughs> I think I'm going to be leaving. And uh, so, so I left one of my best friends, best professional friends behind and came here. And I'm glad to see that you're here today with us. For, we finally been able to lure you here for something, obviously something French. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so I see, I see a lot of my friends and, and family here and I appreciate your being here and I, I welcome you to the EOS family as well. Uh, thank you very much for, your, for your, your help and your support. Let me give you just a little bit of background of what the observatory is all about, what, what half of the audience here is doing, for those of you who aren't, in, aren't part of the EOS. We, we propose to, to Singapore to d conduct primarily, uh, at our core, scientific research on five hazards that are partic particularly uh, troublesome in Southeast Asia. Not all the hazards that are troublesome to Southeast Asia, but five that we felt uh, were particularly important. Earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunami, and of course tsunami had a lot to do with why we were funded, I think. The 2004 event took everybody off guard, including we, we scientists. And then sea level rise and climate change. So we picked those five, but then about 25% of our effort we proposed to the government would be not in science. It would actually be outside of the ivory tower or at least outside of the earth science part of the ivory tower. It would be in areas that actually would allow us to make a difference in the world. We saw that the end of the 20th century was very different than the beginning of the 21st. In the 20th century, we, we, we did a number of things that, that seemed to make sense. We grew our mega cities on coastal areas where there are nice ports and, and, and flat ground and, and we uh, we, we grew with, without a thought in terms of our population. We used resources at an increasingly uh, rapid pace because of our technology. You know, we're so smart that we, in fact, are now using things up faster than we could have possibly done as hunter-gatherers 10,000 years ago. 
or even as farmers in a village uh, 500 years ago. So we got ourselves into quite a predicament in the latter half of the 20th century. And the 21st century, science and technology have to help us get out of it. They have to help us with a soft landing, with a, uh, to build a more sustainable culture, a more sustainable civilization. I'm really pleased at the, the words that, that Gail and Denny spoke about AXE's longer term vision, their, their, their broad vision of trying to, to help build towards safer, safer and more sustainable societies. It's, it's completely in league with what we're trying to do at the observatory and uh, the intellectual partnership that, that Gail mentioned and that Veritel said he liked um, is a very exciting prospect for us. So just as we're in the midst of trying to figure out a few years on in the observatory's life, uh, a year or so ago, just as we were in the midst of trying to figure out, okay, wise guys, we talk about doing something outside of Earth science. How do we do it? How do we actually get earthquake research or volcanic research or sea level research, how do we actually get that to somewhere where it makes a difference, where we're not just um, having press releases that say, oh, we've, we've uh, uh, shown that an earthquake could happen. Well, how do we actually get that to where it makes a difference in, in policy or in, in, economic, in economic activity or in, uh, uh, as it pertains to the growth of Singapore or the, uh, the the growth of, of, of Indonesia or, or the opening up of, of Myanmar? How do we do that? Well, it's a tough question, but right at the time we were starting to ask that question again, along comes the AXA fund and says, hey, what would, you, would you like to propose a, to, to do something in, in this realm? And so, um, so what we proposed was that we would work in basically four areas if we, have, if we had the AXA money. We would work on inventing something we might call Singapore Earth Science. So working with NIE, the National Institute of Education, which trains every Singaporean teacher, uh, working with them we create something that, like what we heard uh, four years ago, uh, Singa Singapore Math. Uh, the, last, the last weekend I was actually in Los Angeles before I, before I uh, uh, abandoned ship there, uh, I opened up, the, well, I picked up the LA Times and I saw a headline, Singapore Math makes a difference in, in, uh, in Los Angeles ghetto schools. And I thought, well, what the heck is that? What is Singapore? I knew what Singapore was, but I didn't know what Singapore math was. So, so it turns out there's an innovative way that NIE has invented uh, to, to teach kids better how to learn mathematics involving visual aids and so on. So I don't know what it is yet, but I'm hoping that part of what we use the AXA money for, the, the return on the money, will be to invent Singapore Earth Science using, using Southeast Asian examples maybe examples of tsunamis that Genoa over here models, or examples of climate change that, that uh, Shen Feng sees in a, in a stalagmite from Burma. Uh, who knows? Maybe using examples that Paramesh, uh, our technical GPS uh, expert, uses to, uh, to, to, to monitor deformation in Sumatra. So we'll invent something called Singapore Earth Science. So that's one of the four areas. What about policy? How do we actually make a difference in the mind of, of, of politicians or in the mind of people, minds of people who are actually making the decisions that, that steer societies in one direction or another? How do we influence the, um, the, the government of, of, of uh, Indonesia or Jakarta when it comes to understanding why Jakarta is sinking at up to 20 centimeters per year? What is it about groundwater withdrawal that causes that to happen? And once you know that, and once you can forecast that Half of Jakarta will be under, under, well, not underwater, but below sea level by 2050. How do you actually not just get a citation for that? How do you, how do you not just get a published paper for that and, and chalk one more check on your, on your list toward tenure? How do you actually make a difference so that people actually then do something that makes sense for their future safety and their sustainability? How do you influence an insurance company that already has in-house research capacity, but how do you do something special in the academic setting that helps them understand what their role is in helping to, to, to make Bangkok or, or um, an agricultural landscape or, or uh, Jakarta a place that's livable by the 21st century? So there's a second area then, policy. A third area 
how do we how can we partner with say Dean Alan Chan here in the second row with his faculty, or how do we partner with him to hire a, a young faculty member who could look at the economics, the com complex economics involved in a situation like, say, Jakarta, or say, food security as uh, uh, as as unusual as the unusual becomes the usual. Uh, if we if an economist already having 50 years of data can't predict much. If even even traditional economics is the dismal science, how can how can economics going forward with changing climate, without being able to use much of the past as a, as a uh, benchmark for what to expect, how can they become less dismal? I'm not so sure. Okay, Bertel mentioned this uh, complexity uh, workshop going on at NTU today and yesterday and tomorrow. Um, uh, he mentions the best minds in the world, but I'm, I'll be surprised if by tomorrow they come up with a solution to that question, even though they're the best minds in the world. Uh, so, so what can we do maybe in the economic realm that actually doesn't just win Nobel Prizes, Bertel, but actually does something that substantially helps people understand how to go forward over the next decades and, and, and century? Okay? So that's another, a third area that I hope that we can get into with the, with the support from the, from the AXA uh, fund. And the, uh, the fourth one, we're wondering whether we have something to offer in academia, within the observatory, in the area of risk. We know that insurers and reinsurers have in-house capacity for assessing their risk, for assessing risk so that they can properly serve their customers. But is there something we can do within the academic world that, that isn't being done now in-house by insurers and reinsurers? So there's a, there's a fourth area that we're contemplating going into. Um, I said something at the, I shared something at the, uh, at the uh, press briefing here before that I wasn't going to share, but I think I'm going to share it here too, even though I wasn't going to share it. And now, now my friends from France know the answer, so I'm going to ask somebody else to answer. And I, I've, uh, Denise said maybe I have my date wrong, so forgive me if I have my date wrong, but I'm going to ask Jean-Philippe a question that bears on French history, okay? Um, this is before you were born by some, some amount, before I was even, before Paul was even born, okay? Um, in 1936, there was a significant political event that happened on the border of Germany and France. Do you know what that was? Denny says I have the date wrong. He thinks it's later. But uh, according to Wikipedia, it's 36. Huh? It was earlier. Ah, oh, that's what he said. That's what he said in the press conference. That's what, that's what, he, that's what was guessed in the press. Yeah, uh, that must be right, 1936. What I'm referring to is the, uh, the, the German invasion of, uh, of the Rhineland. And, and Winston Churchill gave a speech uh, that year, uh, a part of which I'll read here, is, because it pertains to our situation now as opposed to the early 20s, or the, the late 20th century. And um, he, was, he was saying that uh, Britain had an opportunity to support the French in objecting, objecting to that invasion. And uh, if they had done so, the world would have been a very different place. Uh, much of what happened in the 40s would not have happened. And so, uh, so he was basically lambasting his colleagues in Parliament and saying that now is the time for, for action. So think about, when I read this, think about um, natural hazards and what we've built ourselves into in terms of exposure in the late 20th century and then think about what we have in front of us in the first half of the 21st century. Owing to past neglect in the face of the plainest warnings, we've now entered upon a period of danger greater than has befallen Britain since the U-boat campaign was crushed. The era of procrastination, of half measures, of soothing and baffling expedience, of delays is coming to a close. In its place, we're entering a period of consequence. So I think that the backdrop for those of us working on climate change is represented by this glacier melting in Alaska, or this volcano over here, or by this uh, uh, tsunami uh, devastation in the shrimp ponds of Banda Acha. What we're facing as scientists in the 21st century is a much grander challenge than what we faced in the latter half of the 20, 20th century. We can't just be ivory tower we can't just sit and do our stuff. We can't just work to get tenure, work to, make, to, do, to get lots of citations so we become prominent in our field and win prizes. We can't just do that. You know, we, we have a, 
we've made a number of, of decisions as a society, a civilization, in the past half century, aided by our wonderful technology and what's between our ears, okay, how smart we are. But now we have some consequences that are, that are coming. We have large numbers of people exposed on the coasts in particular, but also to food security issues because of climate change. We have immense issues facing humanity. And the observatory, with access, AXA funds help, needs to think about that 25% of our effort that goes out to try to actually make a difference in the world. So that's what we're trying to do. And I want to just close by thanking the AXA Fund, Gail, Denny, Godefroy, and all the people you represent for, for supporting us in this effort, for sharing our vision. And I want to thank uh, all of you who have supported uh, the observatory over the past few years. And uh, I particularly want to thank also all my colleagues here in the back who, uh, in the best tradition of NTU students, are sitting at the back. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I also want to thank, in particular, Andreas Schaffer, who helped in a big way to write the proposal and to, for a successful proposal. And I also want to thank my partner, Kemp, for, uh, for coming here with me to Singapore. I don't think I could have handled it without his, without his help. Where are you, Kemp? Are you hiding somewhere? Oh, there he is. Okay. So thank you all very much. Uh, I look forward to continuing this adventure with you all. Thank you, Professor. We wish you and your team every success. I will now invite Monsieur Duverne and Professor Anderson to come up and sign the certificate for the intellectual partnership between AXA and NTU for the AXA Nanyang Chair. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will now proceed for a lunch reception outside uh, on our foyer, accompanied by the students of NTU and the jazz band. And it is our pleasure to host you today. So thank you all, and please enjoy the food. Thank you. Thank you.